one of the key things that happens to it is that it gets oxidized. Now, the next article that I would refer to, and we have links to these, is an article published in 98, and in in this is in the journal Cell, and the name of the um, manuscript is uh, Oxidized LDL Regulates Macrophage Gene Expression, etc. And what they found was that when, mac- when LDL had these bioactive lipids in it, then the macrophage would consume it. And uh, the bioactive lipids in particular were these molecules called 9 and 13 HODE, H-O-D-E, 9 HODE and 13 HODE. Now, that, this sounds, someone's thinking, oh, Bickman, you're getting, Ben, you're getting way too complex. So I don't, I don't mean to be, but briefly, LDL is a molecule that's basically like a bus that's just carrying around a bunch of fats. And the composition of those fats or the, the type of fats appear to be problematic. And if some of those fats are oxidized, then that LDL molecule carrying those oxidized fats, it now gets sort of flagged as problematic and the macrophage will try to get rid of it. It's because oxidized lipids are very dangerous or also they're referred to as lipid peroxides. They can move through cells and move through membranes and create oxidative stress anywhere throughout the body, including in the mitochondria, and including in the nuclei, you know, which could perhaps result in mutations to genes. So we have these LDL molecules that get enriched with these oxidized lipids, 9-HODE and 13-HODE, and now the macrophages will greedily start engulfing these LDL molecules. It's almost like the macrophage knows this oxidized LDL is so dangerous And the macrophage's job is to clean up dangerous stuff. It is thinking, I'm going to take this for the team. I'm going to engulf these oxidized lipids. It's going to hurt me, but it'll be better than the alternative. And so the macrophage sort of becomes the hero in this sense. But as a person has too much of these oxidized LDLs, the macrophage is losing the war. And so you have more and more macrophages accumulating in an area, more and more oxidized LDL. And we'll come back to how that happens, the oxidized LDL. But then we have what is likely the the formation of the core of the plaque. And it's this this accumulation of these LDL molecules, oxidized LDL, and these foam cells or these macrophages that keep eating it. Now, what's so important about this now, and everything I've been touching on so far is, is very interventional, mechanistic data. We know these things. Here's the first bit of evidence where it's more... Um, speculative. There's uh, in 1998, this um, manuscript has the title strong increase in hydroxy fatty acids, etc. They found that people with confirmed atherosclerosis had up to 100 times more of these oxidized LDL molecules. So these LDL molecules that had these, this nine hode and 13 hode. So they had 100 times more of this oxidized LDL than people up to a hundred times more than people without atherosclerosis. And remember, these are people with confirmed atherosclerosis. And importantly, these molecules, 9-HODE and 13-HODE, which appear to be the most reactive of all the oxidative oxidized lipids and appear to be essential in a macrophage pulling in um, this oxidized LDL molecule, they are derived from one particular type of fat. This is an omega-6 polyunsaturated fat called linoleic acid. You do not get these oxidized lipids from saturated fats. You do not get these oxidized lipids from monounsaturated fats. 